Hello Tappas, in this video we are going to see about surgical conditions mainly from spleen. First one, spleen and culi. What is spleen and culi? This is nothing but many or multiple single accessory spleens will be there along with the normal spleen. In this picture you can able to see. Next comes the sites. Most common site is hilum of the spleen. Next comes the tail of pancreas. And the other areas are near splenic vessels, splenic ligaments, mesocolon and greater momentum. And the most common site is hilum of the spleen. And usually after splenectomy, these uh, accessory spleens undergo hyperplasia and they may lead to some other disorders also. And on peripheral blood smear, they won't show any Howell Jolly bodies or Papenhemia siderotic bodies. Actually, in post splenectomy cases or after splenectomy, this Havel Jolly bodies and Papenheimer bodies will be there in peripheral smear. What is Havel Jolly bodies? Usually, after maturation of erythrocytes, uh, DNA will be expelled by RBCs. But in absent spleen cases or post splenectomy cases, DNA fragments will be there inside the erythroblast. This is called as Havel Jolly bodies. Similarly, Iron containing debris will be eliminated by mature erythrocytes but because of the autosplenectomy or after doing splenectomy we will be having this Papenheimer bodies we can able to see in this picture iron containing bodies are present inside the erythrocytes. So these two bodies will not be seen in case of spleen and kili because of accessory spleen. Next comes splenic injury or rupture spleen. Most common solid organ injured in blunt abdominal trauma that is spleen. And mainly uh, splenic injury occurs commonly following road traffic accidents or some other blunt injury or stab injuries. Sometimes enlarged spleen will be injured more than normal spleen. And uh, uh, we can able to spleen. Spontaneous rupture of spleen in cases of malaria, also infectious mononucleosis. And usually left lobe of uh, spleen will be affected more. Occasionally both lobes will be affected. Next comes the types. There are many types of uh, splenic injury or splenic rupture. First, splenic subcapsular hematoma. Usually these patient... Uh, are asymptomatic but later period they may present with torrential hemorrhages and other types are clean incised wound, lacerated wound, splenic hilar injury and this splenic hilar injury also causes uh, severe hemorrhage and this even may lead to death and the next splenic injury associated with other injuries like left kidney, left colon, small bowel injury, pancreas or left lung injuries. So these are all the types. Now let's see how the patients may present with the complaints and what are all the complaints they may have. Mainly they will present with the features of shock like pale or tachycardia, restlessness, hypotension or pain and tenderness over abdominal, abdominal area and even they may present with rigidity. But what are all the signs will directly indicate the splenic rupture or splenic injury. First one, balance sign. What is balance sign? That is nothing but left-sided abdominal dullness which will not shift. That is known as balance sign. So dullness without shifting. That is balance sign. Next comes Kerr sign. What is Kerr sign? Patients will feel the pain over the left shoulder or left tip of the shoulder after the foot elevation. This is because of nerve stimulation. So this is care sign. So balance sign and care sign. Next comes Seagasser sign. Seagasser sign is also known as phrenic point sign because in case of a severe intracapsular bleeding of the spleen, the 
compression over the phrenic point occurs so the pain will be referred to the border of rectus abdominis muscle so this is known as seger's sign next comes latent period of bandet what is latent period of bandet as uh, we see already in subcapsular hematoma that blood clot temporarily seals off the bleeding but later that uh, uh, clot will be dislodged and that may cause severe bleeding so that time period is called as latent period of bandit and the last one splenosis this is nothing but the fragments of splenic tissue can be seen over the peritoneal cavity following the rupture of spleen so that is known as splenosis so ker sign balance sign seger's tender point latent period of bandet and splenosis they are the important signs of splenic rupture next coming to the investigations we can able to do ultrasonography and complete hemogram and ct just to know the what type of injury it is and plain x ray abdomen there also we can get some of the features like obliteration of splenic line and fracture of lower ribs or some other causes why the splenic rupture occurs next comes splenomegaly splenomegaly is nothing but enlargement of spleen there are many causes main one is infective causes like tuberculosis splenic abscesses infectious mononucleosis malaria typhoid or cholera and other than the infective causes um, some other blood disorders metabolic disorders portal hypertension and malignancy is also cause splenomegaly now clinical features of enlarged spleen mainly mass mass in the left hypochondrium next comes the splenic notch splenic notch will be felt on palpation and it moves with respiration and dull to percus as we already saw in splenic rupture so mass notch is felt and moves with respiration and dull to percus and this uh, enlargement will be directed towards right iliac fossa and hook sign will be there what is hook sign inability to hook under the left costal margin because of the enlargement we won't able to or we can't able to hook under the left costal margin hook sign now what are all the conditions may mimic like enlarged spleen first one kidney mass mainly left sided so left sided kidney mass and right peritoneal mass left sided colonic mass and left left adrenal mass so left sided other organopathic causes may cause or may mimic like enlarged spleen so left sided kidney left colon or left adrenal mass next condition splenic cyst splenic cyst can be true primary cyst or pseudo cyst or secondary cyst what is true primary cyst it can be non parasitic or parasitic why it is called as true primary cyst because it is usually lined by squamous epithelium but in pseudo cyst there is no epithelial lining that is why that is known as pseudo cyst usually pseudo cyst or secondary cyst are common they are 80 percentage and uh, true primary cyst are only ha- only will present in 20 percentage people now let's talk about opsi overwhelming post splenectomy infection usually after following uh, splenectomy the patients will be having reduced immunoglobulin m and reduced antibodies and reduced action of phagocytosis so they are more prone towards the infection and the commonest infection is by pneumococcal septicemia and other infections may also occur by neisseria meningitis h influenza babesia and etc but pneumococcal septicemia is most commonest one and it usually occurs within the 2 years after splenectomy but it can occur at any time risk may persist for lifetime lifetime but more common in 2 years following splenectomy and the clinical features will be uh, present uh, will as usual the normal symptoms like fever chill sore throat hypotension shock respiratory distress and etc but only the history will be helpful to rule out 
nowadays uh, uh, there are um, many vaccines to prevent this opsi like pneumococcal vaccine and other vaccines are also advised like meningococcal vaccine h influenza b vaccine and etc next comes splenic artery aneurysm actually most common abdominal aneurysm is abdominal aorta most common site next to the abdominal aorta splenic artery aneurysm is next common so first common abdominal aorta and next to the abdominal aorta we can able to see splenic artery aneurysm and this is most common in women because of atherosclerosis and it can be some it sometimes it can be congenital also and in acute pancreatitis patients splenic artery pseudo aneurysm may also occur next comes splenic abscess this is uncommon but potentially fatal incidence is very low like 0.7 percentage and precipitating factors are endocarditis aids polycythemia malignancy and other infections here the important thing is this splenic abscess can rupture and it may leads to peritonitis also left subphrenic abscess so splenic abscess has 80 percentage mortality in immunocompromised patients and this is the interesting point in adults one third of abscesses abscesses are multiple and two third are single but in children one third are single and two third are multiple so adults are usually single you can remember like this adults are usually single two third single one third multiple the exact opposite for children next one hypersplenism what is hypersplenism it is over activity of spleen that causes pan cytopenia with more of hypercellular bone marrow and here the causes are many we can able to get many causes like portal hypertension infections primary hypersplenism cystosomiasis tuberculosis or any myeloproliferative disorders mainly this hypersplenism often requires splenectomy here comes the some important notes about hypersplenism only commonest primary splenic neoplasm is hemangioma and angiosarcoma is the most common primary tumor and other tumors are rare like littoral cell angioma lymphangioma inflammatory tumors and secondaries are very rare and the primary malignant splenic tumors are exceedingly rare angiosarcoma is the most common primary tumor next comes wandering spleen what is wandering spleen it occurs uh, due to the failure of formation in suspensory ligament of spleen so that leads to malfunction or a mal position of the spleen so spleen will not be fixed in any position it is due to failure of dorsal mesogastrium to fuse with posterior abdominal wall and it shows long splenic pedicle mainly this is uh, prone for torsion and recurrent ischemia this is also common in female and ct scan is diagnostic 